how do we preserve architectural heritage and then still you know strive for the downtown density that we need to accommodate all the world's people in a sustainable way well i think people have to build tall because uh, the land resources in cities are so limited that if you don't uh, go higher then how do you accommodate this uh, new population that coming into the city so i think i think uh, building building taller buildings will be one one way to go around it do you think though building tall buildings downtown you're going to have pressure on uh, removing older buildings so preserving architectural heritage at the same time may be difficult. But in Taiwan, it's not that much a case because uh, most of the buildings are maybe 30, 40 years old. And we, we, the government do have uh, new laws and regulations to encourage people to tear down old, like four-story old apartment buildings and building nicer, more uh, earthquake-resistant uh, structures. Mm -hmm. So f for the case of Taipei, uh, it's not so much of a historical heritage, but uh, how do we uh, try to convince people to to uh, invite invest deve developers or investors to redevelop this downtown uh, downtown land that is now being uh, occupied by really old uh, buildings. When you talk about building tall, that uh, I think is what we mean by vertical community. You end up with different uses on top of each other, okay. but. Do you think, it, would you define a vertical community as something different, as just putting different uses on top of each other, or how about integrating uses yeah. throughout? Yeah, I, I think uh, th there's a human factor that uh, for the tall building, if there are different uses, and then, uh, and then people in the building working or living in the buildings will have more interactions that we can come uh, maybe define that as a vertical city or vertical community. And in the case of our building, we have 12,000 people working in Taipei 101 Tower. Uh, we try to create different events, seminars, and try to bring people closer together that uh, uh, in, even though they're in, on different floors, they have a chance to, to meet and then know other people and create a sense of community for the people in the building. Hmm. So it's about 10 years later, right, since Taipei 101? Right, right, right. Yes. What sort of impact has it had on the city and the surrounding area in the immediate area? Uh, Taipei is actually a pretty low city. Until Taipei 101 was built, there was no, no structure that's really stepped up in the, in the horizon. So uh, we, we are a, a bit alone in the horizon, but we create a focal point for the, for the city. Mm. And uh, we actually create a new CBD area for Taipei City. Um, and uh, people look up to us, and then citizens embrace us uh, as the symbol of the city, uh, icon for Taipei City. Even government, when they go abroad to promote Taipei tourism or Taipei, they would use our a picture, or, uh, image of Taipei 101 Tower as the uh, in in their promotional material. So I think uh, having a landmark in a city, uh, well, of course, literally a tall building that that uh, very stand up in a, in, a, in a city very obviously, that will really help to bring together uh, a sense of belonging, a sense of pride for the citizen. It certainly seems to have been a successful example in that sense of a building becoming an iconic tower that mm -hmm. it's synonymous with Taipei. Yeah, right. Um, and its name is as well. But so it seems like We created the name. Mm -hmm. The name was like Taipei Financial Center. Our company name is Taipei Financial Center Corporation. But we're actually creating a, a marketing name, Taipei 101. And Taipei should always be in capital because it summarizes the six characteristics of our project. Mm. Uh, technology, artistic, uh, innovation, people, uh, environment, and identity. Mm -hmm. So the Taipei actually has a meaning. And it also stands for Taipei, the city where we stand. So it's, there, it's an anagram? So yes, letter? yes, yes. Uh -huh, okay. Next time when you write Taipei, put it in capital. Yes, yes. So. Do you think every city can have an iconic tower like that? It seems like that that's a large driver of a lot of tall building in Asia is a city wants to proclaim that it's uh, got a new central business district, that it's open for business, that sort of thing, and have an iconic tower. Is that a positive trend, do you think? Uh, I think th uh, it's getting very competitive among cities in Asia. Yeah. Therefore, uh, every city wants to have s some uh, representative of their city, from starting from Petronas Tower in Kuala Lumpur, Shanghai Jingmao Tower, and then Taipei 101. And then there are so many other cities in China also looking to build a tall and tall, taller, taller building in their city. I think they're all in search of uh, uh, icon in that city 
to to bring business in to bring up the uh, economy or to create a new new CBD area for their city and I think it's a good thing but uh, every city not every city can accommodate a, a big structure and because they need to put people in so it has to also be making economic sense or financial sense for the developer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so as long as it makes financial economic sense and the city ends up being able to support it then yeah, and I think it's a good thing that, that I think it's good for for the citizen to have something to to uh, to to look up to and then then uh, to to impress. I think it's really a good thing. We've seen a lot of different uses of tall buildings um, as the form has developed. What are some uses of tall buildings uh, that you feel have been underexplored? Um, like we have an observatory in our building. Uh, we, we don't have a hotel. Uh, it's all office tower and a shopping mall in the podium. And then on top we have uh, uh, observatory and three restaurants. Uh, the restaurants are very popular. I think uh, people like to take the guests, their VIP guests or their customers to, up, to come up to a, 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 a restaurant with very good view of the city so that they can also introduce to them this uh, this uh, nice view of their city and also for special occasions they'll bring their loved ones of their family to to those restaurants and I think many uh, tall buildings have a restaurants on top and um, maybe not all tall buildings have an observatory but the observatory is a good money making um, uh, uh, venue and uh, we, we in the beginning we have um, one million visitors a year now we have uh, 2 million and this year maybe 2.8 million mm -hmm. visitors that will go up to the observatory mm -hmm. and that two two floors will be uh, contributing to our net profit about 20-25% uh, of our net profit so it's a really good money um, generating uh, the, uh, uh, use of the building and and because you are a tall building naturally you have this uh, this uh, good good view and that's where people would, would like to uh, spend the money and go up to to enjoy. So an observatory, that's that's interesting. What other aspects of Taipei 101 uh, do you think could be exported to other buildings or cities in the future that haven't been, you know, popular? Um, we we make a great effort and became the world's tallest green building. Uh, I was going to ask about that as well. Right. In 2009, we decided to go for USGBC's uh, LEED certification, and we got platinum level in the existing building category. And we're very proud that we, 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 we did that. We made the effort, and we become a green building, and providing a healthy, uh, energy-efficient environment to all our tenants. And our tenants in, in, in Brazil, they love the idea that they are in a green building. About being LEED platinum, what lessons do you think it has for sustainable tall building design. Tell us how, you know, the systems work in the building that allow it to be lead platinum and, and why you actually decided to do it. Uh, we were not designed for uh, for lead certification. At that time we didn't know there was a lead system. Uh, lead took off after we were already like into deep into construction. So we applied for the uh, lead existing building category uh, in 2009, about five years into operation. Um, we, we, uh, from the start, we try to uh, be very more energy efficient. So we, we try to go through all the public area and going through our uh, HVAC system and see where we can uh, reduce energy consumption. So we have uh, achieved a pretty good uh, energy reduction. And then a uh, consultant came to us and asked whether or not we're interested in this uh, USGBC LEE system. And uh, it took us some time to, to uh, convince ourselves that we should go for it. Uh, no, it's it's not a it's a easy sell to my boss. But um, we were deciding whether or not or we we want to spend the the money and then make the effort to do it because we have already about nine thousand people working in the building at that time. So the the challenge was really to coordinate with all of these tenants, ninety something tenants in the building. It's not a single tenant uh, occupier building. Uh, with all these different companies, we have to coordinate with with them for times for uh, different time to go in to take different measurements. So that was a big exercise. Um, and then uh, finally, and we were able. We have to do a few projects, alteration projects, to be able to meet the uh, criteria and the requirements of uh, LEED. So finally, we we got LEED uh, platinum certification. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that uh, you were asking uh, what kind of uh, example or what we can share with uh, other tall buildings. I think um, 
the reason we want to do this uh, certification is one is that we, we like to have a third party uh, sort of giving us a, a thorough physical checkup, a verification of how our operation is, the status of our operation and, and energy efficiency. And another thing is, uh, since we were the world's tallest building for five years, and we, we like to share that um, any building can can become a green building, even a big and tall building like Taipei 101. Uh, people, if they you spend the, the necessary amount of money, you you make the effort, you still be a, a green building and be able to save energy and then provide a good, uh, more healthy environment to your your occupants. Is it a goal going forward to continue to be sustainable or perhaps even reduce energy consumption more? Uh, well, energy. Uh, efficiency is a continuous effort and uh, in addition to uh, environmental issues we are all look also looking at uh, social benefits and then uh, cultural uh, aspect of things that we we try to be a more like the three P uh, profit uh, uh, planet and uh, society a uh, people 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 mm -hmm. profit people uh, and uh, planet so we, we like to achieve a triple bottom line uh, and become sustainable and um, so it's not just the, in the environmental part but then we, we have become profitable in the year six and we also want to uh, make more efforts to create a platform for for cultural events for social benefits or social welfare and, and be more uh, respons social responsible uh, em enterprise in the in the city. Is there anything I haven't asked about that you'd like to talk about? As we ran through our questions, have a few extra minutes. Is there anything about Taipei 101, about the development of Taipei or Taiwan in general? Yeah, we we are uh, we have created uh, our first uh, corporate sus su corporate sustainability report uh, last year, and now this year we have created our uh, second uh, edition, published our second CSR report. Addition. And I think it's a, it's a good way to uh, have an overview of all the operation in terms of labor, in terms of uh, society, environment, uh, all aspect of the operation. And then make sure that this uh, tall building operation is a, is a socially responsible uh, operation. Mm -hmm. How can tall buildings be socially responsible? Or what are the most important challenges for them to face in becoming socially responsible? Because um, we are the icon of the city, we are the representative of the city. So whatever, uh, whatever we we come out and, and uh, claim, and then there are more listeners. That uh, if we any event that's held in, held in our venue, they, that would attract more media to come. High profile. So I think we have a higher profile that will attract more attention. So whatever cause uh, that we we can call for, then we, we think they will be making a louder voice uh, to the society, and so we. We like to be used, uh, utilized for that. And what social responsibility issues are you using that voice to call for? Uh, like every October, there's a breast cancer awareness uh, campaign. We put a, a pink ribbon on our building, uh, and uh, uh, diabetes. Uh, there's a blue circle <laughs> we put on the. We uh, we have events and put on the building, and uh, and uh, there's a blood drive every two times a year. Uh, there's uh, we we have our lobby as a as a, a marketplace for for this uh, charity groups to come and sell their products to help them to raise funds. Mm -hmm. So there are all kinds of events that we held every year to to try to help uh, the society. And then broader efforts like sustainability. Uh, how about labor issues or anything related to uh, the construction of tall buildings elsewhere is that something that uh, you have a perspective on having managed uh, the world's tallest for five years well during our during our construction time, there was actually six casualties. Yeah. Um, at the end of the project, we spent a million u s dollars creating a, a seven uh, pillars made of uh, glass brick and have all the workers' name written on it. In, from the architect to the uh, Thai laborers to the to our the company uh, employees, everybody's name who are involved in this project are put on the glass brick, and we have these uh, seven pillars uh, outside of our uh, building. Uh, we call it partners. So we we want to uh, sort of sort of uh, uh, to mem uh, remember these uh, these people who died for the construction of Taipei 101. But we also want to celebrate that all these people's effort together that uh, built this build this uh, great tower
Mm. So, so that that's something that um, I think uh, worthwhile, and and um, all the all the people who were uh, part of this project, part of the construction, were so happy that their name was written somewhere there permanently, and they can bring their green grandchildren to say that your your grandfather used to work for Taipei One Hundred One and then build this tower. Mm.